Hi, I'm Chris Rasmussen, team leader of the Living Intelligence team. I'd like to briefly explain our proposal, the Living Intelligence System. Before we begin, I'd like to put our team's proposal in the context of the analytic transformation movement within the last five years. The intelligence community has introduced a wide range of technologies and has substantially increased IT spending over the last five years to improve upon information sharing, knowledge creation, and connecting analysts. The two most prominent programs are Intellipedia and A-Space. Both programs have high user adoption rates and a tremendous amount of data has been generated within these systems. However, the content within Intellipedia and A-Space is often viewed as inherently less trustworthy than the flagship official analysis coming out of each independent agency publication center. More simply, A-Space, Intellipedia, and most other Web 2.0 content can aptly be described as good for collaboration, but not the product. Now, let's take a look at how official products are often created. A small group within the organization sets out to write a report. This small group generates the text, and this text goes up the chain of command and is edited by a chop chain. Once at the top of the chop chain, this report is disseminated to the community. This rigid and vertical chop chain generally does not recognize horizontal knowledge flows from other organizations. In fact, very little of the official process is crowdsourced to other entities or organizations. This vertical vetting process at the macro level guides the community to behave much like independent newspapers, writing articles and stories on very similar topics. Duplication and overlap is an inherent part of our system purposely designed to catch issues that may slip through the cracks of one organization. The vertically vet then broadcast disseminate model has served many organizations well and continues to do a good job at reporting on transactional pieces of intelligence. However, in these budget conscious times, one must ask, is this system generating too much duplication? The Living Intelligence System aims to reduce duplication and increase efficiency by balancing the utility of vertical vetting and the agency voice with the power of crowdsourcing, and to move the community away from finished intelligence snapshots to a model of reading and writing and consuming stories in a living format. It's important to note that this proposal is more about process reassessment than it is technology. We plan on using many new powerful open source technologies to achieve our goal, but simply adding new technology to the old process does not necessarily lead to fundamental change. The Living Intelligence System aims to fundamentally change how content is created in our community. The issues and trends raised in this project are not necessarily esoteric intelligence community problems. That said, we're going to take a look at what Google, the New York Times, and the Washington Post did with some new technology. The newspaper industry is under tremendous financial pressure from the decline in print advertising revenue to the effects of the internet. Many newspapers around the world are going bankrupt. The ones still afloat are experimenting with new content creation and delivery services in the hope of tapping new revenue streams. From December 2009 to February 2010, the Washington Post, the New York Times, and Google formed a partnership to create content and deliver it in a new way. Google created the Living Story software. We believe this software is ideal for the community, which is drowning in a sea of snapshots. Let's take a look at a living story. Many topics were covered in this format, from the war in Afghanistan to fixing D.C.'s public schools to the NFL playoffs to health care. Let's take a look at the swine flu. At the top is the summary of the story. Below the summary is a timeline of events. The user can slide this from left to right to keep track of the chronology of the story. On the left hand side are the filters. This allows the user to drill down to the level of detail that they want to see. On the right is a timeline of important events. This software maintains the balance between low, medium, and high priority events which the author can enter in the back end content creation system. In the center is the update stream, which keeps track of the entire story. Once a user has read a piece, it grays out so they no longer have to read that story again if they already know about it. There are many advantages to this system. One, everything is under one topical URL. Two, editorial oversight is maintained by this system. Three, it keeps repetition and background information to a minimum. This is a problem in our community with the issue of tailoring. If everything is tailored, then nothing is tailored. And this software will help us get to the point of what is tailored and what is stock content. 
It finally balances the priority between low, medium, and high, which the user can enter when creating the content. Finally, and most importantly, this is organizationally backed and a vetted official content. As you can see the link to this author, he is an employee of the New York Times. This is a problem in our community. Once something goes into the Web 2.0 space, it's no longer valid or as trustworthy as flagship content. The Living Intelligence System aims to fix this problem. Now that you've seen how we handle the output of the Living Intelligence System, how does one get content into the system? We're going to use a wide range of open source technology to accomplish this goal. First, we're going to use WordPress as our content management system. This is good for micro updates and dynamic feeds into the story. The second is MediaWiki, which is the same software that runs Wikipedia, although ours is heavily modified. This will be good for more deep dive, crowdsourced, collaborative analysis. Both WordPress and MediaWiki offer geospatial extensions. All content coming out of the Living Intelligence system will be spatially intelligent, which we can add a widget to the Living Stories output that the user can track the story spatially as well. While users are free to generate content with the WordPress variant, we ultimately like to see users generate content with our heavily modified wiki. It should look familiar. It's the same software that powers Wikipedia and Intellipedia, only this is very, very different. Take a look at the top of this page. Notice the ghosted and unghosted logos. What this means when a logo lights up is that someone with official review authority has signed off on the content. In this case, someone from NGA has signed off and someone from NSA has signed off. How do you know when someone's done that? You can look where it is reviewed. As you can see, someone with Review 1 authority and NSA signed onto it. You can see that on the right hand side in yellow. Someone with Review 2 authority, which is one rung higher at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, has signed off. And the admin and draft edits mean exactly that. Anyone in the community can contribute. So it maintains the power of the authoritative agency voice and crowdsourcing through a simple notification system to let people know that they've signed off on the content, such as stamps and color code reviews. The Google Living Stories experiment did not generate joint content. The Washington Post and the New York Times did not jointly create a piece on healthcare, for example. However, we will create content jointly. But back to the experiment. Let's say that everyone wanted to do a joint piece on healthcare. The Washington Post can focus on politics, and the Wall Street Journal can focus on finances. This will be very, very applicable to our situation in the intelligence community, where agencies will be able to focus on their strong suit. So that's the living intelligence system in a nutshell. What's our elevator speech? Very simply, we aim to change the underlying process of how content is created and to get living, breathing, vetted content into the official channels of the intelligence community. A large portion of this is already operational on the internet and we'll continue to work on this to flesh out what needs to be improved on and what needs to be thrown away. However, it is extremely important to note that this is all open source software and we can scale incredibly quickly to Cipernet and JWix if this project is funded. Thank you for your time.